All right, guys, welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Today's video, we have got 7057 back in the chute, and we're getting an update on that foot that we worked on. Now, if you remember back to that first video, this is the video we had where cow's heart beats in her hoof. She had a stone lodged right near that white line, actually real sharp rock, and it penetrated that sole of that foot. We had to clean that area out. She had some infection up underneath there. We put a block on that other claw, and we wrapped it with salicylic acid and sent her on her way. Now we're back three weeks later to take a look and see how she's recovered. If you have not seen that video, I will put a link in the description below. At first glance, it appears like the lesion has healed up pretty well, but let's pare away some hoof and get a better look. One of the most common questions I get when it comes to working on white lines or working on punctures like we've got here is how do you know how much hoof to take off? So if you go back to that original video when I was working on that lesion, I basically opened up the lesion, but I didn't get too aggressive because there was a lot of soft corium exposed underneath there. And the more you try to remove around that, the more risk you have to damaging that corium. So whenever I'm working on a lesion, my primary goal is to open up the lesion itself to get that to drain so that new hoof can form underneath. What we've got here now, as we're coming back, we've got more loose horn around that. But when I'm working on this now and cleaning up this, the rest of this loose horn now, there's no risk of damaging corium because we've got a nice new layer of horn that's been produced there. So it's much safer to remove that loose horn now. If you were to watch farriers work, for example, um, working on horse hooves, they take away almost nothing when it comes to opening, opening up a puncture or an abscess. All they're trying to do is get us just enough that that, that that area can drain and that infection can get out of there. They'll even use some drawing salves and to pull that infection out instead of opening it, opening it up like we do. The reason they do that is because they can keep that foot in a clean, controlled environment and don't have to uh, have the same risks that we do with dairy cows. As far as me, I tend to take them, uh, as far as cattle trimmers go, a much more conservative approach than most, just for the sole purpose I don't want to damage corium because that slows the healing process. If you're damaging corium, whether it be my knife or whether it be a rock, you are basically inhibiting its ability to produce new horn. So I don't want to do that. That's why I take these steps like I've done here, a minimal approach at the beginning, get that infection to drain, get the new hard horn to form, then I can go back like I've done here and remove all of this loose stuff safely. No risk of corium damage, no risk of delaying the healing process, much safer approach in my opinion. We're all gonna have different approaches and it all comes down to what we think we can remove safely. The one common theme that you'll hear amongst all of us is that we don't wanna damage the corium. That is the layer that does all the work that produces this hard outer covering that's gonna end up protecting the entire foot.
As we zoom in here, you can see right where that lesion was in that initial trim. If we go back to that, you can take a look and see what it looked like at that time. And then now what it is here, we've got horn all the way along that. Just got one little mark there left to check in that white line, and then this foot will be ready to put down. I don't have to worry about there, there's a spot above, a line above, and one below in the sole. I don't need to worry about that. That's just some staining on the sole. I don't need to cut that out. It's not an area that's going to have uh, any, any problems associated with it, so they can stay. But get this foot done get this foot down and we'll let her go and see how she's walking now. I'm going to leave that block in place just because I know that this sole is not going to be very thick at this point yet. It's only been three weeks. So we'll leave it on, get it off in about two weeks time. And then we'll know we'll have plenty of sole and that foot will be ready for weight. So let's get her down guys. That's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you all on the next one.